My name is Luigi Belcastro. I'm a PhD student at Linköping University in Sweden. My research involves studying light scattering in the subdiffuse regime and how it can be used to obtain more information about the microscopic structures in tissues. Spatial frequency domain imaging, or SFDI for short, is a spectral imaging technique that can be used to quantitatively measure optical properties in tissue by illuminating them with patterns of light. The instrumentation needed is very simple. A digital projector is used to shine sinusoidal patterns on the tissue, and a sensor, like a CMOS camera, is used to measure the reflectance of the tissue. Depending on the spatial frequency of the sinusoidal pattern, Absorption and scattering have a different influence on the reflectance, with absorption is more influent at low spatial frequency, causing a reduction in the intensity of the pattern, while scattering is more influent at high spatial frequencies and causing a blurring in the patterns. By performing measurement at multiple spatial frequencies and utilizing a model of light transport, it is possible to separate the effects of the two optical properties and obtain this way a 2D map of absorption and scattering. SFDI finds many clinical applications, like measurements of blood oxygen saturation. But an interesting aspect of scattering is that it allows us to see structural changes in the tissues which are invisible to the naked eye. Normally, we fit the scattering to a simple power law of this type, and we're able to strut two parameters, which gives information on the particle size and density. In order to correlate them to physiological features, however, we need to extract more information from scattering. An interesting aspect of SFDI is that the sinusoidal patterns of light propagate at different depths depending on the spatial frequency. This is because tissue acts as a low-pass filter, blurring out the pattern faster when the spatial frequency is higher. A first approach we have adopted is to use several spatial frequencies ranges in order to probe the tissue at different depths, and then attempt to use depth reconstruction techniques to obtain 3D maps of optical properties, as was already shown in previous works. A second approach we adopt, then, is to perform measurement at different angles, to study what is the angular influence on their diffuse reflectance, and if it is possible to use this method to obtain information about the tissue layers and the orientation of the scattering particles. Using these two approaches, we want to explore light scattering in the subdiffuse regime. So, what is subdiffuse light? It consists of photons which have only gone through a few scattering events, so they still retain some information on the original state, like direction of propagation or polarization. From the MIA theory, we can see that the phase function of a photon scattered by a single particle is quite complex. Normally, we only use a simple first-order approximation, like the Henier-Greenstein phase function. And this is an acceptable approximation when you're, we are dealing with millions of scattered photons. However, more details could be extracted by using more complex higher-order models, which can better describe the propagation of subdiffuse scattered photons. Previous works have shown that it is possible to extract high-order parameters from SFDI measurements, which give information complementary to scattering, as can be seen in this example, where the gamma parameter highlights the presence of a scar tissue in the hand, which cannot be seen from the scattering measurements alone. Here we can see the results from a preliminary study we have conducted Ex vivo tissue samples with burn wounds have been treated with a stem cell based therapy. The tissue was imaged at three increasing spatial frequency ranges in order to sample different volumes. 
and the scattering spectra were measured. We can see that in the control sample, the all three signals are almost the same, which will suggest that the tissue should be quite homogeneous. And this is also confirmed by the histology figure on the right. In the treated sample, instead, the three signals have different scattering slopes, which will suggest the presence of a different layer of tissue. And from the histology, we can see the growth of a new layer of collagen, which would influence the scattering properties of the sample. To sum up, scattering is a great and little explored source of contrast for structural changes in tissue due to wound healing. We can measure scattering using SFDI, and this measurement can be also be depth sensitive by using different spatial frequencies. We also investigate metals to detect subdiffuse scattered photons because they can provide us additional information about microscopical structures in tissue. So, in conclusion, subdiffuse SFDI is a promising non invasive technique and could be easily employed in clinic as a diagnostic tool for wound healing application.